is another aside. I've arranged to have our CTO kind of on this same uh, webinar with us. So if you have any questions, not only uh, will I be able to speak to them, but if you have specific technical questions, uh, Mike, who's our CTO, is sort of standing by if I need to ask him any questions and we can get those answers back to you as well there. So um, that hopefully should work. I guess is, uh, like, <laughs> we've never uh, done it quite this way, but you know, there's a first time for everything and got to be open to change. No big deal. It's great. It's great. And but I also want to thank David for setting this whole thing up because, you know, as he has stated, and I will attest, he's not making dollar one on this. So it's really out of the goodness of his heart and uh, to serve the group that uh, he's actually kind of facilitating this whole conversation. So um, anyway, thank you, David. And I hope everybody appreciates the, the work he puts in to keep that Facebook group going because nobody else is doing it. You know, someone's got to do it. And he's uh, agreed to do that, take that thankless job on and also weather the pot shots of various personalities that may want to throw rocks across the fence uh, without ever having to build the fence themselves. And we all know people like that, and that's just the way the world is. So, again, thank you, David, for putting in the effort. And I've got uh, – I show 505. How's everybody doing? There's everybody – no, I know my cell phone says 504. So I guess we'll give it one more minute because I think my cell phone's more accurate than my PC. So we'll just uh, – I'll just keep rattling along here. Um, also, please, uh, if, if you if you like what you hear today, could you please do me a favor and reach out to Corey as well and thank him for bringing me into this group here um, to have this conversation with you guys. Um, thank you. That would be uh, that'd be great. And because um, you know, again, he took a couple of slings and arrows as well. And uh, hold on here, boom. Okay. And by so doing, you know, again, he didn't have to do that. So, uh, pre you know, appreciate him doing that. So, all right. I think we're there. Um, let me just check one thing. Mike, uh, please chat at me. Let's see. Let's make sure that I, could I put it on uh, do not disturb on Skype. So I just want to make sure. Okay, great. I can see he's doing it. Perfect. Okay. Let's rock and roll. So the reason why we're here, uh, as I understand it anyway, is that there was uh, a product in the marketplace called TextLock <clears throat> that uh, was, uh, I guess, all or many of you purchased. I don't know the exact circumstances, but there was a certain amount of discontent with the functionality of that product. And at that point, uh, Corey kind of reached out to us and asked, you know, do we have anything like that feature, which is kind of a, a bilateral text communications platform? And we said, well, we don't have anything specifically like that. Uh, we've, I mean, we have that bilateral functionality. I'm not sure how you want to use it and how that would evidence. So um, we got into further conversation about it. And as we, you know, and then, of course, introduced to your group and had a nice lengthy conversation with David uh, Hebert about it. And uh, through those conversations came to kind of have a bit of an understanding as to what you're looking for. We've actually modified our existing technology to uh, kind of, a, uh, I think, address what you were looking for. Uh, it is not final, final, but we're we're working pretty close, and we have intentionally not, you know, totally completed it because we actually like your feedback. So when I show you this, it's like 99% done, 98% done. It's just a function of, you know, if there's any little subtle nuances, uh, you know, here's your opportunity to get some custom coding done, essentially. Um, without having to pay for it. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's kind of a nice opportunity for you, frankly, to have like, you know, a real company doing real stuff and you don't have to pay for it. That's, that's not a bad deal at any place you go, as far as I know. So let me just uh, get a, 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 some feedback here. Can everybody see the screen with this little, and, and my mouse moving over on this uh, little, uh, what do call it, this gauge on the right-hand side that goes from red then up like a rainbow from red over to the to the green. Can everybody please just respond and let uh, let me know that you can see that. And then David, if you would just let me know the outcome of that request, if people are actually uh, responding as they can. Um, okay, so it was, it was the yes as in, okay, yeah, thank you. I can see you typing again. All right, 
Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so everyone's everyone can see it. <clears throat> so here's the LightWave platform. This is kind of the home screen. And what we would do here is that we go to a campaign designer. We're going to get to this in a moment, but this is this would be the white label. And you can have your logo up here if you so choose to be a white label versus a reseller of LightWave. And we can talk about you know costs and whatnot later. It's actually very affordable. So, but uh, let's assume that LightWave is your company for the moment, and your logo is up here, and um, you want to create a campaign for a client, a, a bilateral communicate, text communication with a client. Uh, so you would go to that, you'd go to your uh, accounts and users, which is where your sub accounts are located, and you would click on this switch. So we would, what we want to do, I'm just going to choose this one property manager. We sent up, we set up a demonstration account here as if this was one of your sub accounts and you were going to set up a bilateral text communication for them. Uh, so you would hit switch, which means you're going to switch into their account. So it opens, you'll notice it opens up a new window. I'm going to close this in a second because I already have it set up here. But you'll notice it opens up a new window, takes you to the home page, and, um, and tells you that you're now, okay, I'm logged in as me, Don Wexler, but I'm in the property management account. So this could be Joe's Pizzeria, it could be, you know, uh, Carol's Dresses, it could be, you know, uh, the pet store, whatever it might be, whatever your account is, this all red, this red thing is letting you know that you're not in your native account, you're in one of your sub accounts. So I hope, is, is that clear? I mean, can everybody just give me a, yeah, if that makes sense, or Don, you're out of your tree and what the hell are you talking about? I'll be patient for a moment while uh, you guys respond because I can't see it. Um, Dave? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, Dave, I don't know if you're still there, but I will help. Anyway, okay, I, I don't know. I think that uh, a plane crashed into Dave's computer or into Dave anyway. Oh, he is. Okay, there he is. So can everybody see that? I, I guess is everybody... Could people just say, yeah, this, I'm following this or I'm not following this? Again, I, I'm in the dark here, so I need... <laughs> okay, I mean... Uh, oh. All right, so we're going to assume that you're following. Okay, Dave, you got it, man. You need some typing lessons. <laughs> okay. Um, and thank you for doing this job. <laughs> so we're going to come in here. We're in the... Uh, we came into the campaign designer, and we went into the web pages uh for the sub this kind of side menu here and uh we had or we set up a i'm not going to go through all the process but essentially we we created a form and um we're going to show you essentially we're just going to edit an existing form rather than create from scratch just to kind of save some time and some typing so we go to edit web forms we could create a web form we we decided we were going to uh, gather data and subscribe there's a bunch of different things we can do in here, but right now we're just going to focus on this one. Subscribe. There we go. Uh, we gave it a title. Could be anything. Uh, test two way. Actually, you know, I think yeah, I'll just leave it right now for that. And um, we also have some instructions that it's going to appear on the form. So please complete all fields below to start a conversation. Now we just put Google in here as the redirect page. But this is typically where you send people to a thank you page, or, you know, just to show them once they fill the form in that they have successfully transmitted their request or their their question or whatever the conversation was. Uh, so you would just send them something that makes them feel warm and fuzzy that, yes, it was received. We'll, we'll get back to you shortly. And thank you very much for, you know, reaching out to us on some level. Now, we can either go, you can either click on the appearance or I can hit next. I'll just hit next. And you'll notice that we're now in the appearance tab. So this is kind of a whizzy wiggy kind of screen. What you see is what you get. And um, again, here's, remember this thing where it's over here, it said uh, test two way and please complete the fields over here. Well, you'll notice that it shows up. Here's your title and here's your instructions. And then later I'm gonna show you how, where the feet, we add your fields, uh, but you got field, field. And if they don't, if it's a required field and they don't complete it, then there'll be an error message. And then kind of hard coded in the system is this. And I believe somebody earlier in Facebook had asked about compliance. Uh, just to put your minds at ease, we are compliance junkies. Uh, we are very much interested in being in this business for the long haul and have no interest in doing shady stuff or borderline stuff that's, uh, you know, going to get our license yanked on our short code yanked out from underneath us. And a short code for those of you who don't know, 
Um, it gives just a, bit, a quick primer. Hopefully, you know, you, you already know what I'm talking about, so this will all make sense. As you might guess, text messages go to phone numbers, uh, I, you know, mobile phone numbers to be specific. A short code is essentially just an abbreviated phone number, and you buy and you pay substantial amount of money for a short code. Uh, and the advantage of a short code, theoretically, is that people have an easier time remembering it. So if they aren't texting into your program, your campaign, right then and there, while the number's right in front of them, and they do it later, uh, essentially, these kinds of things have, for campaigns, they have a higher um, usage if the numbers are shorter. So people don't have to remember them or miskey them. And we happen to have a short code, although for this purpose, we don't recommend you use a short code. We recommend you use, in fact, a, um, a, a long code, which is a full 10 digit number. And that way it is unique to uh, that particular campaign and they're cheap. So um, anyway, that's that. So, so as an aside, if you're uh, a artiste and you'll notice the default here, the colors are white on white on white. Uh, you can change this to whatever you darn well please, and you can make it as ugly as you wish. Um, or if you know what you're doing, you can make it pretty as you wish. So there is form code here. Uh, you can create this to look any way you wish. If you have a client has specific colors uh, and you want to modify this in order to replicate or Im you know uh, imitate that and mo uh, emulate, thank you. Thanks for all that help. Appreciate that considering I can't hear a thing. Emulate. The, the colors of the business that you are uh, created this for, then you have the ability to do so. I just caution you that you make it look pretty as opposed to gaudy. Uh, if you've got coders available, you can do custom CSS style sheets in here and that we're not gonna go into that right now, but we can certainly work with you on that. If you have very uh, specific form code, we can help you get that uploaded. In any event, this is what it is it will look like, give or take, you can also change your fonts. So there's all kinds of things you can do in here, uh, and we can upload new fonts if you wish, uh, so that whatever this text in here is um, comes out nice and looking the way you want. So um, once you've got your form look and feel in place, then we come over and um, you're gonna choose uh, a folder. Now this folder would have been designed, you would have created a folder earlier. I'm not gonna go into that right now because it's really not relevant to this specific functionality, but it, it's easy to create a folder and actually a future iteration, as in very near future, uh, if it's something you guys really like and actually wanna do and subscribe to this thing, we'll create a button over here that says create folder. You know, just you'll just have it, you'll do it right here. So you don't have to leave the screen or do something beforehand. It'll just be good to go. If you have multiple phone numbers, in other words, if you have many accounts, or this, let's say this business, I should say. So let's say we're in property management. <clears throat> let's say property management has a variety of two-way communications that are different, uh, different forms in different parts of their website or landing pages or however you want to set up. The point is you can have uh, as many phone numbers as you want in here. 82888 is our short code. Um, but we recommend again that you have uh, unique long codes for this purpose as it will keep the conversation threads more manageable uh, on a given topic rather than having just streams and streams of conversations that you got to keep track of. Uh, and again, at a buck a month, whatever these things are, it, it's pretty, you know, it's, it's, it's very affordable. So we have chosen this long code. It really was just pulled out of a hat. Um, we have an ability to do different headings here. So given that we're property management, you just, it shows up over here. One of the reasons why we have this drop down as a have to have is that when we got in this business early on, we found, uh, funny enough, that people would spend a lot of time crafting a very compelling and creative message and yet forget to let people know who the message was from. So they would get this, you know, hey, you know, uh, reply to this and get a coupon for that and blah, blah, blah. And uh, it would go out and people were like, who, who sent this? <laughs> so in any event, um, we have this here and you can customize this by the way. So let's say it was Joe's Pizzeria or you wanted to call it, say it's a uh, property management uh, um, company, right? So that's that that's the new heading and you'll notice it showed up right there so you can see the WYSIWYG on it. 
Well, now the next time well, after I save it, you'll find that this becomes one of the drop downs. So property management would be one and property management company will be another after I save this form. Um, later on, I'll, I'll show you this real quickly. It's not really relevant to what we're doing right this moment, but it will be relevant to later things. Uh, you can insert, as you collect data on people, you can insert fields. So as an example, uh, let's say you want to address somebody personally. You just put their first name in there. So you'd go, you know, you know, dear first name, right? So if your form included their first name, which oftentimes it does, you could reply something like that. You know, dear first name, thanks for filling out our web form. If you have any more questions, you can actually reply to this message. So in other words, you can keep going. Uh, in this case, and by the way, we also keep a character count. So as you may or may not be aware, and I suspect you probably are aware, um, well, <laughs> okay, I'll get to this in a second. There are 160 characters allowed in a text message. Uh, some of those characters are taken up with like the reply stop to quit and some other things, the header. So it really comes functionally, it really winds up being about 140 characters when you kind of get all your little disclosures and whatnot accounted for within this platform or any platform. And now we will do a character count typically at the bottom. Now, when I clicked on that, you'll notice I was just gonna highlight it for you, but by doing that, it actually broke it into a two part. So it now is allowing me to go to 144 characters, but understand that if we go to 144, I have 144 characters remaining, it's gonna be a two, the phone companies will count it as a, as two messages, not just one. So we, we kind of let you know initially, if you remember when that was green, I think it said I had like eight characters left or something like that before I went over the one, um, the, the, the one, um, one message limit. So now I can go to 144 characters and I would have two messages or I could just send it like this and not go over, you know, the, you can see it's kind of like a 144, so maybe I have 140 left, uh, maybe I have four characters left now. But anyway, not to totally beat a dead horse here. Um, yeah, so, well, it doesn't add actually, uh, yeah, I guess it does add 160 characters to the character count by when you kind of scroll over this thing. So David's kind of helping me out here with my tripping over my tongue. So. Uh, wait a second. All right. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, do, 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 oh wait, why would you send into a thank you page instead of a text back to them? Ah, okay. I just saw David's thing. So Joseph, you asked, why would you send them a thank to a thank you page instead of a text back to them? Well, let's assume for the moment that you're busy and I have found that, well, well I have found, we have found that people like a certain amount of instant gratification as in, you know, did this thing ever get through? Do they, did they get my message or didn't they? I, I just kind of, or did I just press this submit button or whatever, you know, filled in the form and who the heck knows what happened to it. So having a little bit of a closed loop puts people's mind at ease that, okay, they may not get back to me immediately because they may be doing something else besides waiting by the phone for my message or waiting by the system for my message. So it just gives them a little assurance that yes, um, we will get back to you shortly as opposed to just having it be there and then just go blank or something and it feels a little disconcerting. It just, it, it just creates a warm and fuzzy. I hope that answers your question. Anyway, once you have your message, uh, your kind of your, your offer message in here, uh, then we go over to, uh, and by the way, this is, a, this is hard, this reply stop to quit, that's a hard code. So that, that's gonna be there always. Then we go to our data fields and we, as I, uh, we, you can choose what fields you want in here. Uh, we just chose this to, include these three fields. You can create your own custom fields elsewhere. Again, I'm not going to go into that right now at great detail, uh, but you know, I will, if it, we will. If uh, it's something you want to know more about, uh, we're happy to show you how that all works, but just understand that you can create custom fields to your heart's content. And these are all drag and drop. So let's say you want the phone number, you know, typically we think we'll put the phone number first. We say, nah, I don't want the phone number first. I want the guy, I want the first name first. So we could just take that and drag it up there. And now it's reordered. So on the form, first name would be first, then phone number, then your comments. And once you've got that all done, um, you save it. So, but before I save this, are there any other questions right now that uh, before we actually look at the form itself and how that works and, and actually try it? Um, uh, I think you're in the chat, Mike, with the uh, Dave. Skype, oh, not, oh, I see the Dave Skype chat. I don't think I can. Anyway, let's see. Just say auto reply and text. Jesus. Um, 
Yes, there is an auto reply in the text as well. If that's if I'm understanding this correctly, Joseph, you're saying or asking or stating, um, what about an auto reply in the text so they would get something on their phone that says it, your message has been received and someone will get back to you shortly? Uh, the answer to that is that we do that also. Um, but again, it's just covering the bases so that people, again, feel warm and fuzzy. And I guess the other, if I, you know, I hadn't really thought about this now, but let's say they don't have their phone. And well, I guess they had to have their, no, they don't have, they, they may not even have their phone near them because they're typing into a text, into a web form. So conceivably, they might not have their phone with them. Um, ah, thank you very much, David. So they may not even have their, uh, Mike, don't go crazy in there, please. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so they may not even have their phone necessarily in proximity, and this way, it's it's just a double a double thing, just to make sure that they um, they are assured that their communication was received. All right, so I'm going to assume because nobody is. It looks like Dave's not telling me anything different. I'm going to just move forward. Uh, so we'd save this, and then we're going to go to look at the form. So actually, let's see. I think the dimensions were yeah, 600, 450. Okay. So we're going to go over here and take a look at our form. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this one. I'll do examples and usage instructions. Here we go. <clears throat> so I'm going to change this to 600 width and 450. I think it was length. Submit. There we go. There we go. And then we'll do it. We'll just take a look at it. Just so. So this is where you would now create this form. You would choose how you want it to to look, and you can always play with the examples here. Um, if you want to see how it looks when we render it this way, this is a sample. We put our first name first. We put our 10 digit mobile number. So they would enter in their phone number here and then they would comment in here. Now we've allowed up to 500 characters. They can always drag this open and move it around if they wish. Uh, we put in 500 characters figuring we don't want people necessarily writing the Magna Carta. We just want them essentially, you know, letting us know succinctly what it is they're interested in. And if there's more information needed, well, that can be handled once you get into communication. Um, and then they would need to click this button here. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'll just, I guess I'll just shoot this foot here. I'm going to put my cell phone in here. Some comments. Uh, this is a demo for the Make Shit Work Facebook group. Howdy. There you go. So then we'll hit, I say agree. And this is uh, some of our TCPA. This is all about um, compliance type stuff. And more compliance stuff down here. And submit. And now we'll go back to the platform. And we've got one unread SMS message in our box. And you'll notice that this thing is flashing to let me know that there's something going on here that I need to pay attention to. And I just got a text on my phone. Let's see here, boom, 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 boom. And the text says, Property Management Co. Remember, because we added that company, Dear Don, thanks for filling out our web form. If you have any more, if you have more questions, you can actually reply to this message. So at this point, I can now start replying to that message, but meaning as the, as the inquirer, and here is the message, and it shows as unread. Shows uh, my phone number. It was uh, via the web form. First name of the person submitting was Don. Uh, replied message type other, and, and then the actual comment, the actual text, which was, this is a demo for the Make Shit Work Facebook page. Howdy. So now, all right, wonderful. So now I'm going to reply on my phone to this, uh, dear Don, thanks for filling out our web form. If you have more questions, you can actually reply to this message. I'm gonna reply and say, uh, let's see here. This text, okay, let's see here. Be right with you. All right, and then I will reply now. Boom. And, I just got another, okay, your message has been, now I got a confirmation message on my phone that says your message has been delivered to property management to change, visit, this, that, and the other. So I can actually edit. I'm, I can actually edit my, what I commented. I'm gonna do an F5 here to refresh. And now there's another unread message in there. So let's take a look. We click on here and lo and behold, this text stuff is the bomb. 
and you can see that it's from the same phone number. So we now have our conversation going. Um, now I can say, okay, well, let's reply to this guy. All right. So we're going to reply to. Uh, we're going to select the number that it came from. So we're going to keep things consistent. And I can choose this point. Okay, we'll go with property management. And we'll say, um, yes, we agree. This stuff is, in fact, the bomb. All right. And you can see over here, it's like that. Well, I'm going to go like this. Okay, so we'll have it formatted a little bit more nicely. And we'll hit send. Okay, and we have a message on our side that says one message sent successfully. And I don't know if you heard that, but my phone just beeped or chimed, whatever that little noise is. And sure enough, property management is the heading, and it says, yes, we agree, this stuff is in fact the bomb. So we could go on forever like this, and you can see, again, you have this nice, by the phone number, you get this threaded, and you can see that it was from this phone number here. Um, and we just kind of keep on going. So we can just kind of see from and to, sent from us to the person, sent from the person to us. And uh, and that's kind of how it works. I mean, I think that's what you guys were looking for. Um, and I'm open to hearing uh, what your thoughts are, suggestions, comments. Uh, was this completely not at all what you're looking for? <laughs> I don't know. So I guess you'll tell me. Um, cause I can't hear a darn thing. <laughs> uh, actually maybe I wonder, so David, if, if you're admit, if you actually take back the screen, are we able to communicate or can people talk back and forth or no? Let's see what's Dave saying here. Show them more on the rest of the platform. Well, I can, um, and I'm happy to do that. Originally we were just going to have this be a half an hour webinar on well, a canvas people. I don't know what people have set up for time and I don't want to, this could go on for, you know, a fairly lengthy time. I could show you kind of a quickie, um, which, you know, but, but before we move on, I just want to get a sense of what your thoughts are with regards to this feature. Then we can get into other things. Cause this was kind of, this was, I think the point of entry for you guys and what you were initially interested in uh, from what we were doing with our platform. So, Thoughts, comments, this is great, this is terrible, this is so-so. Just just let me know what your thoughts are so we know where we're going here with you. And again, happy to, we would like to hear your comments and suggestions. So please uh, don't hold back. Feel free to, uh, to say whatever it is is on your mind. Okay, I can now, I've switched over to the screen. How can we give good feedback if Don can't see the comments? That was from Bob, I, I am now over not sharing my screen anymore. You still may be able to see it, but I'm actually looking at the chat screen now. I think the unit interface looks like it would frighten most business owners to death. Mike, uh, his partner's on the chat. Okay, that's fine. Lori, with the web form, can the person text you a picture? Um, in other words, I guess, uh, assuming an attachment. Uh, currently, we don't have that because it's coming through your phone. Let me think about that. Uh, Mike, what are your thoughts on that? How much trouble would it be to have attachments? Uh, it's an interesting idea. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Okay, I understand. Okay, not, okay so MMS, um, what does that, Mike, chat to me separately over here in Skype, what does that mean in terms of uh, time, resource, et cetera? Okay, okay, so the answer to your question is probably, and this is Lori, uh, probably, uh, just to think it through a little bit, it would come through as an MMS as opposed to an SMS. And it might be a little bit more expensive because I believe MMSs are um, a little pricier than an SMS, but not much, you know. Uh, let's see, you're using a recommender and they take you a picture of the carpet stain. Oh, that's an interesting question. So was that a text lock? Okay, so it was a text lock thing. So you could attach a picture for M and use MMS. Uh, okay, so we can put that on the development thing and that should happen, I suspect, Shouldn't take too long, uh, a few, you know, a couple of days, to get that done. And um, so a text message is like one cent, or you know, it's you know, it's uh, probably you know, depending on which program you come in, it's gonna be anywhere from 1.9 to one cent. Your cost would be anywhere between one and 1.9 cents a text message, and probably be three times that. Um, uh, or, or let's see, no, be 
five times that or so for an SMS message. Um, or excuse me, MMS. So yeah, but again, very inexpensive. We're talking pennies, right? Can the calls be grouped so they can be easier to keep track of? Yes, actually, Rhonda, um, that's, uh, yeah, very much so. In fact, that's been part of our conversation as we were talking about that earlier today is, um, let me get back to the screen share on that and go back to that the text thing. So what we're thinking about doing is using uh, the green and the orange. Let me go back over to here. The, the green and the orange that we currently have in the platform <clears throat> um, as the, as the uh, segmenting colors and then having every conversation associated with, let's say, 2504711 would be all the sense would be one color and the um, received would be a different shade of that same color and it would be grouped by a number. You can sort, by the way, from with these headings. So by clicking on these headings, it sorts. I don't know if you can see that, but each heading automatically sorts, but they would be grouped. And then you'd be able to go back to like the original and just click on sent received dates and send it back to the original uh, order of things from chron chron chronologically, but they would be grouped by, yeah, by the phone number back and forth. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see. Again, we're not fully completed on this only because we had, we had this bilateral communication, but we just had not, um, not in the way you guys wanted it. So we've been making some changes to it. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Text that went into a Gmail or email account instead of a platform. Yeah, yeah. And with regards to, let me talk to, let's see, where was the one? Let's see, can the system send me an alert that I have a message waiting? Yes, Bob, the system very, yeah, if it does, uh, you set that up. There's a variety of places to set that up uh, within the platform that you'd be notified. You go to my account um, and then you'd go to, let's see, I got to remember now, edit profile. No, not there. Hold on, give me a second. Mike Kalumi, where am I going? I can't remember. It's been a while since I've done a phone forward. Let's see, phone numbers maybe? Nope. Uh, view data points. Uh. <laughs> That's like meaningless. <laughs> notifications, phone notifications. Uh, if somebody wants to be notified when a new call or when they have a new message pending, where do we uh, set up those uh, the numbers? They would put their number set up keyword. Uh, that's right. That's right. Okay. So let's go. All right. We, uh, well, it's okay. Notifications. All right. So we would go to when we go to set up uh, notifications. We'd come in here. We'd set up a new. So you can either have be notified by any any means here. So let's say we'll choose every time the keyword is texted in, if only if there's a text after keyword, only subscriber is new to the folder. And that's probably what we would, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, only a subscriber is new to folder and text after. So we would choose that one. We'd put in either a phone number or an email address in here. Uh, so I'd put in, well, it just doesn't make a difference. I wouldn't use my cell phone necessarily, but I would just touch 925, right? 555. One two one two, and this will let's say we'll call it. This is a comment. We'll go like you know, um, Bob's phone. Assuming Bob is the property management guy, <clears throat> and uh, then we'll do like you know, Bob at property management dot com. You know, this be you know, Bob's email. So uh, we we. Obviously, I'm not going to do it. When you put an email, you can see we have a, a test, so you make sure it spells right. We would actually send you a comp. The person whose email is here would receive a confirmation email. They would then click on, in order to uh, verify that that phone that that email is in fact accurate for that individual. Because it's a made up email, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Let's take it out for now. But that's where you would set that up. Okay. Uh, does that answer that question? Let's see, where are you? Get back over there. Was that, I think it was, uh, that was Bob, right? So Bob, does that answer your question? Can you enroll a person you're having a conversation with into a keyword campaign? 
Uh, Bob, I'm not sure I can you enroll a person or have a conversation with into a keyword campaign. When you say a conversation, are you referring to a a voice conversation or are you talking about this, these text back and forth conversations? I'm not sure what kind of a conversation are we referring to, Bob? I'll let you respond to that. Let me keep reading some of the other things. Um, someone text in later, you wouldn't get the notification. Ah, okay, so you're saying, so while you're texting back and forth, can you get them into a uh, into a keyword campaign? Okay, so I, I'm so, so let's think about this for a second. So Mike, I, I know you're probably typing back to Rhonda for a second. I need your attention for a moment. So what Bob is asking for, uh, you and I, I'll say you and I, Mike, are you know chat or we're communicating via the text and Bob wants to or I want to enroll you into a drip campaign or some sort or a coupon or some such thing. Um, uh, if I just say in my text communication, reply with coupon. So a keyword that has been set up. Uh, would that be enough or how would they go about getting the person from a conversation into an actual campaign using a keyword? Right. So the answer, first answer from Mike is we could manually do it, but let, let's see if there's a way to do it via text. You, know, you could always go into the system and manually add them to a campaign. Um, and we think we haven't tested it because, again, this is a fairly new feature that we've been building for you guys, um, you know, tweaking an existing feature that was never really intended quite for this purpose. But uh, we're pretty sure that if we, we can test it. Uh, and I can get back to you with an answer on that, Bob. Yeah, if we have the reply with a keyword, uh, understand, so you don't want to do manual. Um, again, we suspect yes. The only, uh, I guess the keyword would have to be, when you choose keywords, you have to make sure they're not conversational type words, like the word pizza, if you're a pizza parlor, because then somebody say, hey, hey uh, Bob, I'd like to order a pepperoni pizza, and all of a sudden they find themselves in a pizza campaign, which if that's okay, that's okay. Um, but just to, you know, just be mindful that the system is not doesn't know a conversation from a keyword. So if you set your keywords up so they aren't, you know, pizza or pool sweep or you know, so some kind of a phrase that would ordinarily be used in common conversation, then I'm guessing that should be not a problem. Um, so uh, let's see. Does that answer your question, Bob? And with regards to platforms being um, simpler, comp let me go back to that. Who was that? Who said that uh, somebody's eyes would cross or something like that? Okay, cool. Thank you, Bob. And let's see. Somebody up here had mentioned that they were fearful. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, let's see here. Uh, somebody had mentioned they felt that the interface was somewhat daunting. Ah, there we go. Dave Masters. Yeah, Dave. Um, this is a lot of horsepower. I'll tell you, this is not a one-trick pony. Um, let me get into the uh, – I'll, I'll just briefly show you that it's not as complex as you may initially imagine. Some of the features can be somewhat complex, but this is a, this is a, a, this is a very robust platform, yet we've taken great pains to make it rather simplistic to use. So but I'm going to log out of this one. Let me close out of this. I'm going to close this one. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out here. I'm going to come back in into the demo account. Okay, I think you guys can probably still see my screen. And yeah, perfect. I want to go to the birthday club because I want to show you some, some very interesting things here. All right, so, well, first I'll start with this way. Um, this has been, so almost, almost all campaigns start as either a mobile coupon or a quick message. And then we build upon that basic functionality. So we take a keyword here of, uh, you know, uh, let's call it uh, make shit, because I'm guessing that's over, that's uh, available. Uh, and then we have a list, list, you know, the list description. You'll notice defaults to the name of the short of the keyword, but we may just say uh, uh, demonstration 
administration for Facebook group. Right. So that three months from now, if this was some arcane keyword and you can't remember exactly what the campaign was, you have the opportunity to kind of describe it in plain English. So when you look at that list later, you understand, oh, OK, those guys were from that. People in that list came in for that reason. Uh, we also have this, uh, again, talking about compliance, approximate messages for messages per month, per week, per day. This is what uh, you need to let people know what they can expect in terms of communications, ongoing communications from your business, uh, part of the compliance. And then we go to our auto responses right over here. If we just leave all these check boxes alone, I guess I'll just say this, when you check these boxes, other things happen. And we basically set up in such a way that they don't appear and confuse the issue if you're not gonna use it. So we just kind of leave things simple. Um, so let's say for the purpose of this one, we're just gonna be very simple. We'd come over to our auto response, we would choose you know, our drop-down company, whatever it might be. We would determine if we're gonna capture any information, if we're gonna ask them a question as opposed to just sending out a coupon as an example or some such thing. Uh, we would, if we're gonna collect, uh, let's say for a birthday club, we would collect date and name. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, again, if you wanna insert fields, you've got all kinds of fields you can insert in here. I'm not gonna go into great detail right now because it is, it, we could be on here for literally a couple hours if we were going to go that deep. And we're happy to do that with you individually if there's that level of interest. We would type our message in here, whatever it is we want to communicate. Again, that's a little crunch. So we want to, since we're using WYSIWYG, we're going to kind of space it out a little bit nicer. We'll put a little thing over here. Let's say there is an offer in this thing. We're going to say we want um, this the offer to expire within seven days of when they receive it. And you'll notice this came up. It wasn't there before. That automatically, whoop, right there, that automatically comes up. And uh, you can now, if, uh, in this case, seven days from today, if you were to opt into this thing today, this campaign or this request, this offer, um, this would be month and day calculated automatically seven days from now. So it expires, uh, what's today? Today is the 11th or something? So this would be like uh, 718, it would be expires to 718. And then you can determine, well, do we want this, these people to have access to these coupons every single time. They can text in one a minute and just keep getting racking these things up or we would make it available once per minute, once per hour, per day, per week, per month, whatever it is, per device. And I'll say once per device. And then we put in, let's say the first name here again and say, you know, uh, uh, congrats, you've already received this offer. So the first time they would text in, they would get this job gobbledygook, whatever it is, whatever this offer was up here. And if they tried texting it again within the time frame that we're saying you can't, then they would get this alternative response saying, well, you, know, you already you already took advantage of this offer. And they would save this. And now that's the that's how you do a very simple, straightforward, one dimensional kind of a campaign. Um, I'm gonna get to take you to the a little bit more sophisticated thing in a second. Any questions on that one right now before I launch into, I'll show you the birthday club, which is sort of the next level up because it's got all kinds of fun stuff I want to show you here. Uh, I don't know if anyone's saying anything. I'll assume, well, I'm not going to assume anything. I'll just look over real quick. Uh, okay, look at everybody's, if any, let me look at, uh, oh, let me see here. Oh, so maybe I missed, so they will it work in the UK. Uh, long codes, yes, we can use long codes in the UK. Maybe I missed something. If an account is set up on your platform for a client and a client received and reply from an email account, in other words, incoming test W, go directly into the email of the client and they reply from their email and is converted to a text sent to the customer. Um, I'm gonna let Mike speak to that. Mike, I don't know if you can see that question from Joseph Stanley. It's the third one up. All right, let me get back to birthday club here. Okay, um, we are using Twilio for the long codes. Uh, for our short code, we use uh, a short code through an aggregator. I mean, typical short code stuff, it's expensive. Uh, we are actually looking at other phone number systems that are actually less expensive than Twilio, but that probably will be a couple of months out. We're setting up some very close relationships with some uh, actual phone companies to go direct uh, to right into their systems. So from uh, on the so let's look at 
at uh, the birthday club. So essentially, you'll see it starts out the same. You know, same. You have a keyword. You're choosing a phone number. You've got, you describe your list, however you want to describe your list. In this case, we're going to also add a drip sequence. Um, when you get to auto responses, you'll notice this time I chose capture data. So we're actually going to capture data, which is date plus name in this case, and we're going to choose the format. We don't care about the year, so we're just going to go with birthday uh, as opposed to birth date, which would include the year because most people, frankly, are well, maybe a little more skitterish about putting out what year they're born. They don't mind so much the day. Um, so in this one says reply with your birthday, day slash month, and your first name will remind you each year to collect your free gift. Reply with date and name. Example, 1231 Bob. And this is these two things are automatically put in when you choose uh, a date and name data capture as an example. And here we've chosen once per year it is enough for people to be able to get that. So they could change their birthday, I guess, once a year if they really wanted to, but uh, they're not going to get it more than once a year on whatever date they choose. And then the alternate reply, thanks for, you're already on our birthday club list. Keep your eyes open a few days before your birthday for your free gift. Now, you'll notice there's two new tabs up here that weren't there before. Originally, we just had the two. And these showed up for two reasons. One is we checked the box, drip sequence, which brought up this tab. And because we chose date and name, confirm and offer tab then evidenced. So let's look at that one first. We have our basic communication configured. Now we're going to look at confirm and offer. So when they enter in their name properly, so if they enter in 1231 Bob, just as it's formatted here, then they will receive this message. If they were to, as an example, put in Bob 12 slash 31, they would get a text that says, um, don't recognize the format. Please look at the example and enter it in as example, you know, something along that line, as the example dictates. Anyway, once they do enter it in properly, they come here, fantastic, you're in the birthday club and can expect to receive your freebie on your birthday. Tell your friends to join us too. Now, one of the things that's kind of interesting and pretty cool about this platform is that we have the ability to run campaigns off of two different dates because we have two different things going on here. We've got their birth date or birth, you know, their birthday, and we have the date upon which they actually entered in this campaign. So confirm an offer is this whole drip sequence that we've created here, and you can do this ad hoc, um, runs based on the date that they entered in for their birthday. So that's going to be sometime in the future, this campaign this campaign is going to start, and we're going to, we could choose to do it days before, days of, days after, but we want to prime the pump for the birthday. So let's say four days before their birthday, whatever date they put in there, your birthday is in a few days, and we'll be sending you a coupon for a free widget plan now, rally your friends to join you. Then let's say one day beforehand, tomorrow's the big day. We hope to see you on your birthday. Keep your eyes open for your free widget coupon coming tomorrow. And you'll, it's all WYSIWYG. You can see it up here. And then uh, on the actual day of, now we've switched from days before to day of. And we've got at 8 a.m., we've got this one, which is today's your birthday. Show this text to get your free widget on us. Bring your friends. Everyone loves widgets. And we said, yes, we want this to expire, in this case, on their birthday. So they have to use it on their birthday or it goes bad. Now, if we want to keep going, just add a row. It's as simple as clicking the plus sign. And now we can, you know, we could add infinite number of drips. And now at this point, we're probably going days after. And so after, thanks for coming on your birthday or, you know, hope, you know, we hope you arrive on your birthday, something. You could have post-birthday uh, conversations if you wish. Uh, I'm not going to create that right now. So I'm just going to delete this one. As simple as hitting the negative button, and we have a little fail safe so you don't remove things by accident. Hit remove. Okay, so now it's gone. We're back to our original thing. So this was based on the birthday. Now, the other date that's relevant is when they actually opted into the birthday list. So this is going to be sending out immediately following their opt in. So shortly after, in this case, three minutes after they actually opt in, they texted in what was the uh, demo B day. Uh, to thank you for joining our VIP club, show your code. And this is a, a unique code that each person would get. It's not the same code. I get code A, Mike gets code B, Dave gets code C. They're all unique. So that way, um, the the store or restaurant or whatever the business is can actually, we have a uh, a portal that they can enter this code into and see if it's a legitimate code or if it's been used before, how many times it's been 
attempted to be used before, et cetera, et cetera. So these codes are real useful in terms of preventing kind of a, a fraudulent coupon redemption. Uh, thank you for joining our previous club. Show this code and get a free upgrade to a large widget for the price of a medium. And then five days afterwards, we value your VIP customers. Come in with a friend and get half off a Schmidlap when you buy a widget. And I think you get the idea, um, at least by my arcane sense of humor. Um, and then I say 20 days after, bring a friend and get 50% off the second widget when you buy one at full price. Just show this code. So anyway, and, this, and again, you can add this infinitely. You can just have this thing go on and on and on. Um, days after, 110. 10 a.m. Or if you wanted to do a different a specific time, you can come here and actually enter in, uh, you know, 10.07 or something, whatever. You could customize it however you want. Uh, I'm not going to save that, so we'll just delete that. Yes, remove. And uh, so that's kind of how you can modify these things. Uh, just so you know, we have American Idol style voting. So if you have businesses that are comedy clubs, uh, festivals, um, karaoke, you know, any kind of things like that. Uh, American Isle style voting allows you to do very sophisticated. Um, people can vote in where they, you have an option to say you can vote for, vote for multiple contestants. You can only choose one. So whichever the most recent one they vote for cancels out previous votings. Or again, multiple contestants, they could vote for all 10 of them if they wanted to. Um, and it goes on and on. I'm, again, I'm not going to go into great length just to understand that that feature exists there. Um, we have a viral referral campaign. Uh, one thing we found is that um, a lot of these things, uh, these campaigns are only as successful as the frontline staff, their motivation. Uh, because if they aren't motivated to promote the whatever the promotion is, um, then um, the, essentially it's not going to work. You know, and, and we found that to be the Achilles heel with a lot of businesses is they just, this training is not real great. So this is a way for um, the businesses to incent the staff. And we would do it here. So let's say you've got, you know, staff of Bob, John, Sally. We've cleverly named them Bob, John, Sally. Go figure. Um, you can add as many as you want. Boom, boom, boom. The point is um, that if we do choose this um, and we go now to auto responses, we now have a new tab called referred by staff. So the question is, now if they were to type in or text in demo B-Day space Bob or Sally or John, we can say that in addition or instead of receiving this promotion, you get this promotion, which is theoretically better than that promotion. <laughs> so the staff could say, hey, if you text my name in, which is Bob, whatever it might be, hopefully it's not like Bartholomew Vanderbilt III, uh, which would take, you know, obviously problems. But that's why you would then modify your staff name instead of Bartholomew Vanderbilt the third, whatever it was I said before, to just Bob. So that's what this referral code is. So this is the actual person's real name, and this is like a, a, a shorthand version of it to make it easy for the cons customer to type it in. Uh, then you put in, you know, a special uh, promo here. So they text in the, the keyword plus the server's name or staffer's name. Uh, they would get this alternative thing. And at the end of whatever time period, let's say it's monthly, you have the ability in the system to track how many people logged in using Bob's name versus John versus Sally. And you can have contests and reward people who are uh, more, um, uh, you know, the, the people who are, who are working for the business in a better way and get a little bit of friendly competition going amongst the staff to win whatever it might be, a $50 spiff or a, a, an extra day off or you know, who knows. It's up to the business, right? But the point is, this is how you incent your frontline people to actually get off their butts and see what's in it for them. Because otherwise, a lot of the staff will just see this, as with most things, that's just additional work that they have to do that they don't get compensated for. This is how you motivate your staff. In addition to that, uh, let's see, go back in here. Um, we also have, let's see, I'll get that in a minute. Uh, it'd be more for like radio stations, like text in KGYO and your favorite song, something along that line. Um, and so we basically keep that data so that the radio station would be able to then say, oh, okay, we're going to do uh, um, 
Moonlight in the Pines. Georgia, Georgia by Ray Charles. There we go. <laughs> so someone t- texts in, uh, you know, KGOY, whatever it is, and uh, Georgia on my mind, Ray Charles, then they would know what song that is being requested, that kind of a thing. Notification we talked about text. We have all kinds of, I'm not going to get into it right now, but we have all kinds of raffles. Um, we got a ton of stuff with raffles. Raffles, coupons. So you could do fishbowl. And I guess I'll do a little distinction. A fishbowl campaign is typically a replacement for you go into a deli and you um, put your card in the fishbowl and they do a drawing. That's your typical fishbowl. This essentially is a text fishbowl. And um, they would incent, they would just text in whatever the, the keyword would be. They would be entered into a folder and then there'd be automatic drawings uh, for, from that. In this case, we're going to choose three people from these lists that were created from the keywords. In this case, demo fish one. If they have multiple locations, they could have like, you know, location A would be demo fish one, location two would be demo fish two, whatever you have as many lists as you want. And you could select your winners from however many fish bowls if you want to do an aggregate versus an individual fish bowl drawing for each. Um, you set your time. Probably actually probably doing the first of the previous month. What time you want to do it? Probably not at 12 a.m. because you don't want people getting notified at midnight. So let's say you do it at, uh, I don't know, let's do an 8 a.m. to be nice and friendly to people's sleep habits. And then you can choose, you know, we'll do it monthly. And we can set, uh, uh, let's see, we'll just, there we go. So we're, we're going to say the first, and we're going to say it's going to go, we'll, we'll do this through, uh, you know, through the end of the year. And now it's all set up. And, you know, every, on the first of every month, it's going to draw from those lists for the previous month, and it's going to choose three winners. Very straightforward, and then you get this message. And again, you can determine your expiration dates. You can address it by their first name if they uh, had asked for their first name as part of the uh, the campaign. And uh, blah, blah. So that's a fishbowl versus a raffle. Uh, so a raffle would be more relevant to, let's say, um, uh, something you're, you're up the, in front of a stage. Let's see, where's my raffle stuff? I have to go back. Let's viral go over here. Uh, go back to birthday. And uh, boom, boom, boom. Uh, no, I'm in the wrong place. Sorry. I think it'll be over here. Raffle. Thank you. All right. So on raffle, um, this is more like um, you're up in front of a group and you want to do something like a trade show or you're speaking in front of a group and you want to do more of an immediate on the fly kind of a drawing. So you say, okay, we're going to break at 1030. Everybody, I want everybody back here in 15 minutes. Uh, at 1045, we're gonna have, I'm going to give you a keyword. You know, we're going to have you text this thing in. At 1050, we're going to do a drawing. Uh, you got to be in the room to win. And, um, you know, then we'll go from there. So that you could do on the fly. And we can hook this up so you could actually do it from your phone while in front, you know, smartphone while in front of the room. Um, actually, it doesn't have to be a smartphone. It can be, uh, yeah, as long as it can text. Uh, we would identify that phone as tied to this contest. And so we're going to say, let's say this would be a five minute raffle. And then here are your messages, your win messages. And you can have your start times, use an alternate response. If they try to text in before 1045 uh, while it's running, what their response would be, like it's a confirmation message that's successfully entered. After the raffle is over, like, sorry, you missed it. You're too late. So you have all these different messages that you can put in here if you so choose. You know, everything nicely collapses to keep things clean. Um, and then, again, you can uh, you can select these winners on the fly so it's real handy from that. Again, trade shows, speaking in front of speaking engagements. Uh, you choose however many winners you want at each of the drawings, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, scratchers, I don't know. How, how, how you guys doing? Am I losing you here? I'm, again, this could go on for some time. Um, give me a couple of chats if you're even still out there. I don't even know if anyone's still sticking around. <laughs> my, if I bored or overwhelmed you at this point. Hello. <laughs> ah, pricing. Okay. Um, well, let's see. So, f- 
for the um, for a white label, uh, the initial plan is 1,500 texts. It's $197 setup, and then $99.95 a month. Any texts over the 1,500 are billed to you at 1.9 cents, and uh, you also build four dollars per account. So if you have 10 accounts, it's the 99.95 plus 40 dollars. If you had 100 accounts, it would be the 9.95 plus um, 400 dollars. So it's four dollars per sub account, and this is not per sub. It meaning and it's the 99.95 the 99 is the uh, the base price. Rollover minutes, uh, not at this time. No, we aren't doing rollover minutes. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, and what's coming very shortly is we're also incorporating voice broadcast and uh, full email functionality as well. So when you're creating campaigns, you can alternate between uh, SMS, uh, looks like shortly MMS, <laughs> for those who want to uh, attach pictures and whatnot, uh, phone recordings, as well as uh, voice drops to uh, directly into voicemail and email. So you can really mix up a nice campaign uh, over you know extended period of time and communicate with people through a variety of different uh, platforms. If all you wanted was the text lock feature, then we we're gonna do that at uh, $37 a month. Um, and it'd be a nine, $97 sign up fee, set up fee, and then a, uh, a $37 a month for that. If that's all you got, that kind of bilateral communication thing, if that's something you'd like. And we'll, you know, again, we'll customize it as we get more feedback to uh, accommodate how you're going to use it. Because so we, we want you to use it. We want you to uh, have a good success with it. And the other thing about the complexity of the platform, if you will, it is pretty robust. It's not really designed for the corner store. We have found, again, that most businesses have their hands full just doing what they're doing, uh, let alone learning technology. Um, what we have found in our experience is that uh, a done-for-you service is a much better way to go, uh, where you uh, charge for your time to actually facilitate this for them so they don't have to learn it. They don't really ever go in there unless they want to, uh, except for perhaps the um, you know, responding to messages like in the text lock thing, because certainly uh, with the permissions that we have, we have a very detailed, let's just say, a robust permissions back end. So you could essentially lock down everything else so all they would see is what they need to see. And that's the advantage of being a white label, essentially, is you have that ability to lock it down as you see fit um, so that uh, people uh, are focused on what it is they need to do and also they can see what they don't have access to. So at a later date, uh, they ask about, well, what about that other thing there I saw that looked pretty cool? You say, oh, yeah, that's available for an additional cost. I'm happy to talk to you about that. It's really a great feature and blah, 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 and go into your sales spiel. Um, scratcher messages, this is a very, very cool thing um, where, let's see, I was talking to David about this. So let's say um, you're McDonald's and you want to offer, um, essentially, a, it's, a, it's a coupon, but it's a variable coupon, meaning for every thousand people that opt in or that text in our keyword, we're going to give out a grand prize for every... Uh, out of a thousand, one percent of a thousand gets the grand prize, the super duper prize. Nine people are going to get a grand prize. So we got a super grand, a grand. Then we're going to get that brings us to ten, one and nine. Then we're going to say um, a ninety people are going to get a really good prize that brings us to a hundred. Four hundred people, which now makes us you know four hundred plus the hundred out of a thousand. 400 people are going to get, let's say, uh, you know, Hot Pocket or whatever they call it, uh, Apple Turnover, whatever it might be. And then the remaining 500 will get a, you know, whatever, a soda. So this would be an example of Mickey D, random with odds. We're going to uh, once per device in so many days. So we're going to let them uh, every seven days, they can enter again in this particular example. But we could have this be, you know, once a year, uh, once a month, whatever it might be. Uh, alternate message would go here. Uh, we can choose how we want the duration of this campaign. So we can have it end on a specific date. We can say we only want to do this three times. So we're going to allow this to cycle three times through the thousand. So I mean, we'll allow 3,000 people to play this. Or we can say uh, whichever is less, either X times, meaning three times, or 
the end of the month, whichever comes first. So if we don't make it through all 3,000 by the end of the month, it ends. Or if we make it through 3,000 uh, and it hasn't come to the end of the month yet, again, it ends. Uh, and then how many um, how, how many times do we let it cycle? So if we are cycling, how many times are we going to cycle it? In this case, three times, we could have that be any number. Then we go to the awards, and this is kind of what we had talked about. One, this is the super duper prize. 99 out of 1,000 would be a super prize. 400 out of 1,000 would get a pretty good prize. And then 500 out of 1,000 gets a free straw with your drink, yippee. And then the end message we just put in here that, you know, the, this is over. You know, you did, uh, this, uh, can't, what do you call it? The, the, scr the scratcher campaign has ended. Hope you, you know, keep checking back for the next scratcher campaign. What this is really good for is the ability to offer a grand prize, super grand prize. You know, it could be as an example, like a big screen television, you know, color TV or something like that. And it could be 10,000 entrants. So you got the big prize opportunity for whoever's entering. And you also have the ability for the owner to minim, you know, quantify their cost for the entire campaign overall, whatever it's a thousand people, 10,000 people, whatever it may be. They can quantify their cost. So they know that they're giving away one super duper grand prize and 99 of this other and 400 of the other and 500 of the other, what that cost is over a thousand people. So they can, you know, that super or the, the the large screen TV divided by a thousand people, and yeah, not so not so much now per person who opted in, as opposed to having obviously a, a smaller business couldn't afford to do a, a, a large raffle like that, and if even if they did, having this one prize kind of, you know, you're gonna, you know, yeah, it's a good prize, but what are the chances I'm going to win? Or at least with this kind of a campaign, everybody's going to probably get something, so people feel a lot better about playing in the future and whatnot and being engaged. That's it's a great campaign. Um, won't get into appointment reminders, but that's a very sophisticated feature as well. We're actually using that well in, uh, with property management. Well, yeah, not, it, again, these are all get pretty deep on some of the stuff and I could I'm happy to go deep with you if it's something you'd like me to do. I, I think I'll spare everybody in the moment, uh, on this one for right now. Um, I'm trying to say anything else that's glaringly obvious. Uh, yeah, well, media libraries where we're kind of collecting all the, can send out images. We've had it here as an example for, for different web pages, landing pages we're building, audio sound files, record your audio, upload PDFs for like uh, white papers if you want to be sending that stuff out, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you want to schedule, by the way, once you've built your list and you want to send out a blast, some kind of a campaign, you come over to the calendar. It's pretty intuitive, I think. You just come over to the scheduling calendar. You click on schedule. You put in the uh, name of your campaign, whatever it is, promotional blast. Uh, we'll keep Acme widgets. We'll just put in here, um, come in to redeem this really great offer. You won't be sorry. All right. Uh, we'll put a calculate. Yeah, we'll put an end date on that. We'll say seven days out. We'll give them seven days to redeem it. Uh, we'll look over here. And yeah, okay, I'll put an extra character return so it looks a little nicer. We'll do another one over here. Uh, okay, that's great. And you'll notice I have 56 characters remaining. Oh, just to show you before, as I kind of start going, there we go. When I get to 20, um, it, it turns green. If I keep going too far, if I go over my limit, it turns red. And of course, I can click over here to uh, add the second part of the message, but I'm going to take that off. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to send it, uh, I could send it right now if I wanted to, or I could send it later, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click send later. Ah, I haven't selected my list yet. See, idiot proofing. Mike knows me. So we'll go to select a list and we'll select this one since nobody's in it. There we go. And we'll hit send later. And now you see it's scheduled to go out tomorrow at 2 p.m. Um, and it's going to go out to zero subscribers because that was how many people were in the list. And I could click on it and come back here and edit anything I want. Send later. Or there it is. And when it goes out, it will actually change to sent. It will change to this picture down here, which is the envelope, like a, a letter that's opened, that it was actually sent. By the way, you'll see that there's um, needs approval, rejected, draft. Uh, if you have salespeople and you, or let's say the business you're uh, selling to has levels of management that need, uh, uh, that need to approve a message before it goes out, you have your frontline people. This again, this is a, a permissions-based thing we can get into at another time. 
but essentially can give people different permissions as to what kinds of messages they're allowed to create. So in most, if you have a, a lower level person who's creating these things and you want an upper management person to approve it before it goes out, they would save it. It would save as a draft, which would be this like looking thing. Uh, a notification would go to one of the upper management people who that have been selected in your notifications list. They would be notified that a new campaign was created that they need to review. They could either uh, reject it um, or approve it. And if they reject it, when the uh, person who created the campaign puts their mouse over it, there'd be a little commentary as to why it was rejected. Like, dude, this is a, uh, you're sending out a beer promotion to a kindergarten class. Perhaps you should rethink that. And they go, oh, ooh, wrong one. Sorry. You know, anyway. So um, again, a lot of granularity, very, very simple. Uh, and then, of course, there's a lot of reporting back here. We're very granular in our reporting. So all kinds of reports and uh, more coming all the time. So uh, I think that's a pretty good overview that went like way the hell over. <laughs> so I appreciate your indulgence and I apologize if I've uh, overstayed my welcome. Uh, I don't know if there are any other questions that uh, you'd like addressed. Uh, uh, okay, so perhaps, so things weren't always showing there. Is that my, it looked like Mike, uh, noted that perhaps as I was moving through things, there were certain parts of the screen that weren't showing. Is that what I'm led to believe? So perhaps some of it was Greek because you weren't able to see what I was actually talking about. Earth to anybody out there. Let's see here. Uh, okay, sure, Dave. Love to talk about the voice drop thing. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, looks like... So what I notice uh, you put looks like there, looks like David, but I'm not sure what looks like means. Looks like not everything was showing or it looks like everything was showing. I've stopped by the way, I'm kind of, I think I'm good to the moment. We've gone an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes or so. And I think that's much longer than I originally had planned. Uh, if you guys would like to go deep in another webinar, happy to do that. Um, you just need to you know, come up, be aware that we're gonna go deep. This is a very, very robust platform and has, uh, it's, it's real businesses. We're dealing with, we're dealing with some very large companies and, uh, this is the kind of functionality that's needed and it's got the reliability that they require in order to, uh, to stake their campaigns on a platform. So we've also, I think we've made it fairly intuitive. Uh, I mean, I know it's got a lot going on, but I think you'll, you'll power, once you actually start walking through it yourself, it's actually pretty paint by the numbers, you know, Sell this it's just linear as you move through things it's very very linear um so you know first this then that then the next thing then the next thing the next thing so it's just very very linear you don't have to jump around a lot from this to that on any given campaign well uh with that being said i'm not seeing any more questions did we answer everything that you guys had asked or did we do we miss something I, i'll need to put that out there if, if we haven't answered your question it was not through intent it was just through oversight so take the time now to, to put it in there if there's something that you would like answered that uh, we somehow missed. And I advan uh, apologize in advance if that's the case. Um, okay, I think we're done. David, um, I'm gonna, why don't you take back control and let us know your thoughts or what you wanna do or. And by the way, David, thank you very much. Really appreciate your uh, hosting this whole thing and facilitating it.